there is a set of characteristics that we look at when we're determining what sex someone is. So that is what I wanted to talk about today. That's what I want to illustrate for you today in our very first segment where we're bringing in MS Paint to help us illustrate the issue that we're dealing with here today. We've been dealing with this discourse about transness and gender and sex for years, years and years. I've been participating in it myself for a long time. And you know, there was a point in the midst of all of this advocacy where we were really hammering home that like sex and gender are different things. You know, you might remember um, Chaz Bono saying that like gender is between your ears and sex is what's between your legs, right? And this kind of goes along with some terminology distinctions. Like you'll say male and female to refer to sex, but you'll say uh, man and woman to refer to gender, right? Very discreet. And I think ultimately, like it's not necessarily incorrect to say that gender and sex like can be two different things, right? The issue is that what has happened as a result of this is that TERFs and other transphobes and stuff will say like, okay, well fine, like trans women can call themselves trans women, but they're still male, you know? Like uh, trans men can call themselves trans men, but really we know that they're female. And, all, and like secretly in their minds, they're like, they're equivocating the word female with the word woman, like because to a transphobe, like to be a woman or a man is to describe the sexed characteristics that like the, the gender and the sex can't be separate. And that's part of why we, we did this for so long. We hammered it home. We were like, please, can we just have these things be separate? And people were asking in the discord, like, why would you, why would you be upset at someone saying that a trans woman is male? Like, first of all, there is an inherent implicit misgendering kind of going into that, I think. It's, I think it's just like, there's there's just like a sense that you have about it. It's like, I can tell that the point of like, why would you need to point out? Why would you need to say, oh, trans women can call themselves women, but they're still male. You know, like, what is the point of saying that except to create like a discrete otherizing category, right? First of all, first problem. Second problem with this is that it is just factually incorrect, I think. So we've discussed briefly before that maybe sex is malleable. Like, first of all, it's it's a, just something that we've labeled as like this cluster of things tend to go together and this cluster of things tend to go together. We call it a bimodal distribution when there's like a lot of people in these two groups and there's people on the extreme outliers, not, not as many though, and then there's some people in between these two big groups. We might call those people intersex and there's like less of them, but it's not strictly one or the other, right? There is a set of characteristics that we look at when we're determining what sex someone is. So that is what I wanted to talk about today. That's what I want to illustrate for you today in our very first segment where we're bringing in MS Paint to help us illustrate the issue that we're dealing with here today, okay? So, we are going to be talking about sex. What is it? What is? We don't know, question mark, okay? I'm so bad at drawing question marks. All right, so we're, what is it? What is sex, okay? People are like, it's chromosomes, it's gametes, it's gonads, what, what is it, okay? Question mark, we have it. Uh, can we just like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's all I want, okay, perfect, perfect, okay, amazing. So, let's look at what different things we typically use to describe sex, or like what goes into it, what do you think of? Like, you think about what is, what is sex? Is pee pee? Like is genitals maybe like that's that's one factor. Let's t let's go ahead and write that there. Genitals. That may be like an obvious one. Most people might think of this one first. You know, we all learned it when we were little. PP -pee equal boy, VV equal girl. Okay, genitals, right? And let's say another relevant factor would be. Oh my God, where's my mouse? I cannot. I earnestly can't see it. Okay, there it is. I found it. <laughs> okay, so another factor is, let's say, gonads. 
That's whether you have testicles or ovaries or ovotestes or none. Gonads, okay? That's definitely a relevant factor to sex, right? That's absolutely relevant. And what else do we got? Let's say, let's, uh, oh, you know, what hormones you have are probably really important. Hormones, hormones. Oh my God, look at this. I am so good at drawing with my mouse. Okay, hormones. Like, do you have testosterone mostly or estrogen mostly? Now, to be clear, and just to, remind everybody you have both for them like unless there is something chemically like in ba unbalanced generally speaking men have testosterone mostly but also a little bit of estrogen and then women have mostly estrogen and a little bit of testosterone when we're talking about cis men and cis women um so just to be clear it's not like men don't have any estrogen and women don't have any testosterone Everybody has some of both. Unless like you've had your gonads removed or you don't have gonads. Why is it so easy for me to lose my mouse on this page? It is so frustrating. Okay, there it is. So there's, that's three. Hmm, we got three different characteristics here. I, I think that we can think of another though. I think that we can uh, look also at your, how are we gonna write this? Your secondary characteristics. Secondary. Whoops, second, let's just say second. Ah, what's secondary? I can't write, okay. So your secondary sex characteristics, which is like, do you have boobs or do you have a beard? Or uh, is your fat distributed in, in a feminine or masculine way? Like is your fat mostly on your hips and your butt or is your fat mostly on your belly? That kind of question about secondary sex characteristics, which we could also say sort of implied under secondary sex characteristics is whether your body can react to the hormones. Because uh, obviously you can have the hormones in your body, but they might not do anything if your body doesn't have the receptors necessary. So that uh, that's just a relevant factor there. And I think there's one, let's, oh yeah, oh yeah, there is uh, obviously silly me there's one last characteristic and that characteristic is chromosomes let's see if we can fit it here chromosomes okay that's whether you have xx or xy or xxy or x zero like there are multiple different configurations of sex hormones most people don't have theirs tested so you wouldn't know but that's okay so I think this is a good, good list to at least start with, you know, when we are describing what sex is, we really are looking at all five of these different characteristics. And usually it's like, okay, let's, so let's say we have a, a, a cisgender woman here. Let's make her pink. Okay. We have a cisgender woman. She was born a little baby girl. And now she is a adult human female, okay? So she's got long hair, she's got boobies, uh, she's got a V down here, a vagina, and okay, let's just start there. So, so with a cisgender woman, usually, now most people don't know their chromosomes, but we're just gonna assume that they're XX for the sake of this example. We're just gonna assume that she has XX chromosomes, okay? Now, um, I already said that she had a vagina, so her genitals are girl genitals there. Uh, let's also say uh, she is pregnant. So we know that she has the organs inside of her required to have a baby. So she has uh, ovaries, you know, we're just gonna assume she has ovaries because she's pregnant. Uh, she has a bunch of estrogen in her body, we can tell because of her secondary sex characteristics. So those two, like I said, kind of go together. So she has boobies and, and you know, no beard. So she has female secondary sex characteristics and she has female hormones because she has mostly estrogen in her body, okay? This is how we typically group these characteristics. This is why people think that sex is binary, but it's actually bimodal because most people 
will have either all female parts or all boy parts when we're looking at this. At least, again, we assume we don't usually actually look at people's chromosomes. This is just always going to be something we're having to guess about. Um, so it makes sense to call this person female because we've decided that when a vagina and ovaries and estrogen and XX chromosomes all happen together in one person, we call that collection of traits female, right? Now, I want to look at a different person. Let's see uh, this other person I want to look at. Um, let's make this person purple, okay? This is a trans woman. So she is a little bit taller. <laughs> I guess I just drew her bigger. Um, let's, uh, you know, she has blue hair and it's a little bit shorter but still pretty cool looking okay so and she has boobies and a vagina but she is not pregnant we we don't think that she has any ovaries in there and she had her testicles removed so we're just gonna assume that she has no gonads as we're gonna have to have to assume that okay and she has no beard no beard all right so let's look at let's look through here we are going to have to assume again about the chromosomes because she hasn't had her chromosomes tested. She can't afford it. Most people can't afford it. And most people don't know what their chromosomes are. All right. So, but we're just going to guess. We're just going to assume that she has XY chromosomes because that's what we have observed to be typical with someone who was born male. She's a trans woman. I've already said she's a trans woman. Okay. So she is a trans woman who takes estrogen so she has more estrogen in her body than testosterone that is her hormonal makeup now she has boobies and no beard i already said that so she has female secondary sex characteristics now this part you know she i said that she has a vagina so she has female genitals but she used to have testicles and now she doesn't anymore so she kind of has um what color should we make this? Let's just make it like brown. She has kind of no sex as far as gonads are concerned. If if ovaries are female and testicles are male, she kind of has none. So that is three out of five characteristics that are female. Only one characteristic is male. Okay. So now, how many factors matters when we're talking about what sex someone is? You know, someone might say, oh, it doesn't matter uh, if someone has, you know, surgically changed their genitals or whatever. Their chromosomes are still the same, which means they're always going to be intrinsically male. Does that actually make any sense, though, is the question. Because here's my thoughts on it. What hormones you have are the big factor in how medications work and in testing certain blood levels. Like when you're on testosterone, for example, uh, if you are assigned a female and you're on testosterone, if they continue testing your hemoglobin count and, and show that your sex is female, it's going to start looking like a dangerously high range because the normative range for female levels of hemoglobin are lower than for males. But if you start running that same blood test through and just switch the sex to male, all of a sudden the hemoglobin count is within normal range. So it seems most often that dosages of medication and blood tests and such like that are mostly dependent on hormones mostly dependent on hormones. I kind of like lost my mind with my mouse there for a second. Mostly dependent on hormones. So in most medical situations, it's actually more important to know your sex based on your hormones because your gonads, like your, and your gonads and your genitals are not going to make an impact on that. Not nearly so much. Like your risk for heart attack, I believe goes up slightly like this woman, when she started taking estrogen, she was 
taking testosterone, or she was on testosterone naturally, like her body was doing testosterone before. And then when she started testosterone, or sorry, estrogen, her risk of heart attack went up slightly. Because if I believe, I believe if I'm remembering my numbers correctly, women have a slightly higher risk of heart attack. Or maybe, yeah, and a heart attack and stroke, I think, because their blood clot uh, uh, tendency is more likely, especially um, like after the age of 35 and such. So this woman has a cardiovascular risk disease, just like any other woman, and she needs to take care of her body in that way, right? And I said that she has a vagina, which means that she needs gynecological care. Like she needs to go to an OBGYN and have her health regularly checked on in that regard. So this person who started out assigned male, had testosterone in their body, has gone through these changes. And like I said, we have three out of five characteristics, female, only one male and one that's kind of neither, one that's kind of neither up here. I'm just not changing the color apparently. And because of how prevalent each of these factors is, like the chromosomes make no difference to the medical care. The chromosomes make no difference to the gynecological care or to whether you get prostate cancer, you know? The chromosomes, the chromosomes make no difference as to whether you even grow testicles or whatever in the first place. Like the, the gene that turns on the testicles like the testicle growing manufa like factory gets it starting is not even on your sex chromosome pair. It's on a different pair of chromosomes entirely. So I hope that this made it a little bit easier to understand why it makes the most sense to say that trans women who are, who are on hormones, who've had these surgeries are female for all intents and purposes that it matters. Like when you start taking hormones, your sweat and your pee smell different your emotional processing can change, your libido can change, your digestion can change. It creates like an, an innumerable amount of changes in your body. Sex hormones affect a lot of your body systems. And my personal opinion is that as soon as someone starts taking hormones, they have effectively changed their sex. And like, if your doctor is doing tests correctly and everything, they will have to make adjustments to your tests and your medications as you continue increasing your dose and getting on a, on a normative amount so that you're not, um, like you usually, you know, you start out on a lower dose and kind of like keep check, check, check of your levels as you go along to make sure that they're hitting the targets that you're going for, right? So yeah, that is why I believe that trans women are women and female and trans men are men and male and non-binary people can describe their bodies in whatever way works best for them. Like, I don't know how I would describe my body at this point because I have been on hormones and I'm not right now. Some things have changed permanently uh, and other things haven't. And it's like, I don't know. I don't think I can say that I am the same sex that I was assigned at birth, although I wouldn't also now claim that I'm the opposite. I don't know. Maybe I should go through this little gender bread person that I've created for myself someday and make it make sense. <laughs> but for now, I uh, hope that that made everything make sense and I uh, appreciate your time and I'm gonna wrap the segment there. Thank you. <laughs> like the video, oh my God, hit like, subscribe. Patreon, do it. Thank you so much to everyone who supports the channel. This is my full-time job. You are all very much appreciated. And I wanna especially shout out some of my patrons. We have Tiago Nascimento, Mersh Rolvog, Brandon, Maurice Taylor, Jovian F. Gaudreau, Bean, Heather Clarkson, Amanda B., Sarah A., Wellington Marcus, R. Halverson, Athiet, Decoy Duck, Michelle Winter, Suzanne Maynard, Nova, Elizabeth Bartell, and Mr. Atheist.